Whatever you're ready, man. All right. Hey, my name is Frank with the Veterans Barbecue Camp, a nonprofit uh, out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. We teach veterans barbecue as a therapeutic hobby. Uh, we teach them the basic fundamentals of low and slow barbecue at no cost to them. They arrive to our camps. We issue them Oklahoma Joe's smokers. We give them heat resistant gloves, meat thermometers, uh, these tactical aprons, and they don't have to pay for anything, they take everything home. So they show up, we issue them the smokers, we explain how to use them, fire management, airflow, no gas, no propane. They do not, uh, they learn just the basics. It's a primitive style, more intimate. You're watching the fire. You are, you're not just setting it, forget it like you would a propane smoker. Uh, the reason why we do that, we, we want people to, their, their mind to stay busy. We know a lot of veterans, when they get back from uh, overseas, having an idle mind may not be the best uh, situation. So we try to, uh, we want to do the primitive style, adding the wood to the smoke, uh, constantly uh, maintaining that temperature, controlling temperature by airflow and uh, the vents. Once, once they show up, we go into different classes. A lot of the instructors that we have now have gone to my prior camps. Uh, my board members are from prior camps. I recruit uh, different veterans who've gone through the camps with different skill sets, and they help me uh, get the camp organized. It's the first year that I've had board members. I've done it four years, but this is the first time uh, we actually have the board members helping out with everything. And we have been building this nonprofit so we can hopefully branch this out all the country and uh, teach as many veterans barbecue as we possibly can. We know, for myself, my story, uh, I, my, I'm a Marine, I went to Iraq 2004, 2007. Uh, I was a quick reac reaction force in 2004, and then uh, when again, I had a mind roller, so I was about two clicks in front of everybody else, uh, I guess essentially clearing the path for outside bombs with the mind roller, uh, so that way the people behind me, uh, you know, they're safe, I guess, doing a little like recon element in front of the uh, convoy. So when I got back, I was a little, um, extra hyper alert. Uh, growing up, I've always been super extrovert. Uh, my family's always been the same way, having people at the house growing up, uh, cooking food for people. We always did a lot of grilling. So when I was in the Marines, I would always, uh, wherever I get stationed, I'd buy like a Weber grill. Like you know, I remember going to uh, Walmart, getting a Weber grill and telling all the Marines, instead of going out in town and uh, wreaking havoc, stay around here and we'll, we'll smoke, uh, or we'll, we'll grill chicken rots or whatever. At that point, I didn't, I, I didn't do low and slow barbecue. So when I got out of the Marines in 2008, uh, I, I loved how here in the South that uh, barbecue is a culture. It's not, it's not just a, a mill, it's a gathering. And you could do that with grilling, but uh, here it was more ingrained in, in the fabric of the, the Southern culture. I really like that. And I was going to college at MTSU, uh, and I got in a law, I was in law enforcement, so I worked night shift. Mm -hmm. And my parents came to visit me. I think it was 2008, bought me a smoker. So I started smoking meat, uh, just as, I didn't really realize at the time, but it was kind of a therapeutic hobby for me. I listened to old school music, like Hank Williams, Merle Haggard, blues, whatever. And I would, uh, I get a six pack from Whole Foods back when you could actually choose your own six. And I'd try different beers and I would listen to music and I would smoke barbecue all night. And I'd have people over, and the reason why I did barbecue, my, uh, one of the main reasons why I was doing barbecue is I want to hang out with people. Every time I went out after a couple of deployments, I lost that extrovert side of me, the part I loved about myself the most. And I got uh, very, um, it's almost like you're like, I'm a abused pit bull kind of feeling. You're just always like looking around, expecting something to happen. Because every time overseas we let our guard down, we'd get, we'd ha you know, we ambush or whatever. So your, bra you, your brain trains itself to, that fight or flight. You, when you go back to the States, which is interesting to me, even though you're back in the States, that fight or flight sticks with you. People try to fix it with medication. We are trying to help with barbecue. We're not a solution uh, to going to the VA, but we, we believe that uh, cooking in general is therapeutic and uh, barbecue adds a whole different social element to it. So when the, the veterans back up a little bit. So when I started doing barbecue, I wanted to hang out with people. So I started doing barbecue. I was like, if I do barbecue good enough, people come to my house where I feel comfortable. So that's where you get the social, uh, I guess you lose your social health after a couple of deployments and barbecue helped me get mine back. So what I do when I was in college and I was in law enforcement, 
smoke meat all night and I'd invite people over and I would get a St. Jude jar and I'd stick it on the uh, kitchen table and I would just tell everyone just donate St. Jude, it's on me. And it got me used to being around people again versus going out to, especially when I moved to Nashville. Nashville, you know, it's a very busy town. And every time I'd go out, I'd just be constantly, you know, just looking around in the corner. Uh, and it would get to a point where I would let the, uh, let the waitress know, like, hey, do you mind putting me in the corner just so I can actually relax? And if I went out in public, I just could not relax. And so I didn't really enjoy myself. I wanted to go out, but once I got out there, I, I was just too edgy. So then I start branching out, going to like low-key places like breweries, and then now, uh, like with my food truck, you'll see me out there talking to everybody back turn. Obviously, there's a certain awareness, you know, that's trained in us, but I'm not the same as I used to be, and I credit that towards barbecue. So uh, I was in law enforcement for nine years, uh, and then college before. But while I was in college, I was doing events at my house for like all the different students I was in class with, and then I was doing all the events for our agency. Anytime we had training events, I would provide the barbecue. And uh, like one time our chief had me do a huge uh, event at the Carton Plantation in Franklin, which is like an FBI association conference. But so it, it was a therapy, but it also helped just to actually smoke in the meat, the, the science behind it. When I was in college, I was learning uh, some chemistry, I was taking some chemistry and biology classes and I was trying to figure out why the meat falls apart. The collagen's breaking down. Uh, when it melts, it actually turns into jello. The rendering of the fat, why does the meat fall apart? And people always ask me, what kind of uh, barbecue do you, Texas, Memphis? I'm like, I have no idea what these folks are doing. I just learned how to make the meat fall apart and I just continue to do that. So you have the, the therapeutic hobby. I, I believe it to be a therapeutic hobby. And then you have the social uh, element. It helped me out and I wanted to duplicate that. So I started the food truck. The food truck is voted best in the county every year in business. And it kind of gave me some credibility to where uh, I felt comfortable. I'd, so many people tell me how good the barbecue was and it, it gave me the confidence, I guess, and uh, the credibility with the people to start a veterans bar account. I want to teach veterans barbecue because it helped me. And that's what, why we started a nonprofit. Myself and the board members, uh, we plan, we get uh, sponsors like the American Legion, they donated like $1,300, uh, just various uh, small donations, the ticket sales, uh, help pay for it. So we spent all this time getting money raised so we can buy the smokers and all the equipment, the meat for training. Uh, this year we had Tennessee Craft Butcher, they donated uh, 50 Boston butts and 50 ribs. So we get donations like that, There's a lot of local support. We haven't gone uh, national yet, but the plan is, like I said, to take this all around the country, create different chapters, kind of like the American Legion. We don't, we don't plan on going anywhere. And uh, my goal is to teach thousands of veterans barbecue. And if uh, we save one vet, you know, it's worth it. But, uh, and at the end of the day, if we're saying it, even if it doesn't help them, we taught them how to do barbecue, you know? And it's just one tool of many. Barbecue is not the solution to everything, obviously. Uh, we want to have several toolboxes we can use. That's why we get other nonprofits. Uh, like Warriors Garden, uh, Dogs of War, come and explain what they do. And so that way the veterans have other resources available to them because it may not be barbecue, it could be gardening, it could be going out hunting, fishing, but we connect them with the right people. Uh, I know what it's like coming back from overseas. I know a lot of people are still coming back uh, from places and they're having a hard time fitting in. Barbecue is a way to um, get back out there to get, you know, if you do barbecue, you're know, going to keep coming to you and you're going to be around a bunch of happy people. And it's, like, it's positive energy. People don't go to a barbecue with the attitude. People use, typically go when they're having a good time. So we, this is our fourth. And like I said, we probably have about 50 veterans, alumni, which we call them, uh, who've gone through the camp. We have done disaster relief. We have had uh, probably about 10 to 15 veterans who've gone to the camps. Uh, during the, the floods in Waverly. I'm like, hey, we gave you all smokers. Who wants to come uh, feed the first responders and the victims? And they all showed up and we fed probably about 500 victims of first responders uh, and volunteers during that event, which is really cool for me watching how barbecue can help vets. And it was cool for me to see how they can see how barbecue can help other people. And it's then the networking that it's created, they all hang out and they all post uh, 
online, and we have a parent, uh, we have parent-child teams that come, which is a great experience. We've had a uh, the last camp we had, we had a female who just got back from deployment within weeks. She came to the camp and it was a good way for her to bond back with her son that she hasn't uh, been with for months. So that's, that's a really cool thing that we offer. And we plan on doing a lot more disaster relief uh, in the future. We're kind of growing the business to that point. Uh, we would eventually like to have a, prop, a piece of property where we can, uh, as a hub, and then have it all around the country. But yeah, uh, yeah, this is a, uh, it's, it's interesting to see something grow from nothing and just watch, it's very surreal. When I, like right now I'm looking outside the window behind the camera and I'm watching all the vets laughing and talking, hanging out around smokers and that's uh, pretty cool. But anyway, yeah. yeah. Is that good? Right. good? You can edit the bad part, <laughs> hopefully. All right. Good, yeah. awesome, thank you. Thank you. So thank you. Yeah, yes. thank you. Appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, thank you. All right, good. Let's get back at it.